Okay, any time we get a complicated answer, or any time in almost any area of, you know, physics, engineering, science, you should always sort of take some simple cases and see, you know, some simple limiting cases and see if your complicated answer reproduces simple stuff that you thought you understood before, okay? So that's what I'd like to do first then, uh, now that we have this, you know, conductivity tensor and this dielectric tensor. I'd like to try to reproduce some dielectric constants that we had before in some particular cases and see if uh, that turned out to be, if they turned out to be the right thing. So the first thing I need to do is to write out really what the dielectric tensor looks like uh, for that given uh, rather complicated, um, what do you call it, uh, conductivity tensor. So what we would do is we would say, well, we've got then epsilon hat, um, which we mean, by the way, of course, that we have an epsilon xx hat an epsilon xy, and an epsilon xz, epsilon yx, epsilon yy, epsilon yz. So we've got a full tensor is what I'm trying to get at here. And then an epsilon uh, zx, epsilon zy, and an epsilon zz. And what we can see is that this will just be then, again, just writing down this formula again, the permeability of, of um, or dielectric constant for free space, uh, epsilon naught I plus then I over omega epsilon naught times the conductivity tensor, which is a function of omega. So now I'll remove that one uh, for a moment. Now, we stick this in, and if we have I over omega epsilon naught, and we multiply it by I epsilon naught over omega, then the two epsilon naughts are going to cancel out. Uh, I'm sorry, inside here, the two epsilon naughts are going to cancel out. The I's go to minus 1. I squared goes to minus 1, and we get 1 over omega squared. So what that means is that our total answer will then be first the identity tensor, which just represents the vacuum uh, dielectric constant, uh, and then all this uh, other stuff up here. And so we'll get minus the sum over species omega pj squared over omega squared. And then it'll be times this big matrix of stuff. So omega squared divided by omega squared minus omega c squared and I omega omega C divided by omega squared minus omega C squared zero, and then minus I omega omega C over omega squared minus omega C squared, and diagonal omega squared over omega squared minus omega C squared zero, 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 one. And so this is then our uh, dielectric uh, tensor. And, well, anyway, that's uh, all I need for that. Now, uh, let's do some, some checks, okay? Does this dielectric tensor do anything like um, reasonable things that we had before? And one of the first check that we can do is to say, what about if we were only concerned along the field line? So along B... we should get what we got before, which was that our dielectric constant was just equal to 1 minus omega PE squared over omega squared. Okay? Now, is that what we get? Well, a long B would be to say that we're interested only in the Z component. Okay? And now it's a tensor, so I have to do it not just the z component, z dot epsilon hat, but in addition, the epsilon hat has to operate on something, the electric field, and I would want that electric field to be in the z direction. So therefore, to 
simplify this for this special case, what I need to do is take z hat dot epsilon tensor dot z hat. This is for the component along the field, and this is saying that the electric field perturbation was only along the field as well. And that will turn out to be just epsilon zz hat. And so epsilon zz hat will be then epsilon naught times. Now the identity tensor, perhaps I you know should have written out, of course, is just one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one, where implicitly, you know, I'm dealing with an XYZ coordinate system. And so there will be a three three or ZZ component. So I'll get a one. Um, and then I'll get out of this that one there, but with this summation over species. So I get sum over J omega P J squared over omega squared. So now if I uh, add together, you remember the J just represents both electrons and ions. So this becomes epsilon naught 1 minus omega P E squared over omega squared and then minus omega P I squared over omega squared. So is this what I expected? Well, mostly, except I'm a little surprised to see the ions come in here. Should I worry about that? Nah, because it turns out that omega p i squared is approximately m e over m i times omega p e squared. So it's 1 over 1,836 times it. So it's much less than omega p e squared. And so, in fact, this term is negligible compared to that one. And these two are then are effectively the same. So that was our first check. Uh, another check is that perpendicular to B, uh, some time ago, we derived that we should get um, the perpendicular dielectric constant, which we found was epsilon naught times 1 plus C squared over V alpha squared. This came about because of the polarization drift, and we derived that one day. Now, the way we derived that is that this, this should be true in the limit as omega goes to 0. It turns out because we didn't take account of any cyclotron harmonic details when we did that. So what I would like to do is then take the limit as omega goes to zero of the perpendicular dielectric constant. And what do I mean by the perpendicular dielectric constant? Well, if we come back to our dielectric tensor here, these are the x, x, and y, y components. This is sort of the z, z component right down there, right? And these are the xx, xy, yx, yy. And so we'll call all of this perpendicular, okay? The, the two by two matrix there, because it's got the x, y components. So that's the part I want to um, take a look at now to see what uh, happens there. And I want in the limit that omega goes to zero. Well, oh, I'm off the end of the paper here. Okay, so if you just uh, stick that in, you'll get epsilon naught, um, and then there'll be identity tensor. Uh, so I want to take, for this dielectric constant, I want to take the frequency goes to zero limit of it. Well, the identity tensor just sits there like it was before. How about these terms here? Well, if I take the omega squared goes to zero limit, first off, that omega squared cancels that omega squared. And so I can just get omega p squared over frequency squared minus cyclotron frequency squared. But if I take the low frequency limit of that, I just eliminate the omega c squared in the denominator. What about this term up here? Well, it looks divergent uh, in that um, if you just look at it, you say, gosh, uh, it goes, you know, there's a 1 over omega squared and there's an omega up there. And so it looks like, gosh, I'll get a, a 1 over omega, take the omega goes to zero limit. However, what happens is that's not true because if you look at the mass 
scaling that goes in here and so forth, you'll find that this is just the sum over, um, over species, n naught q, and that will actually give you quasi-neutrality. So let me do that. I better do that as a, a side calculation. So let's notice that, um, let's put it this way, the limit as omega goes to zero of, let's say, the sum over j of omega pj squared over omega squared times, and I'll take this element up here, so this is omega omega c over omega squared minus omega c squared. Um, now, first I can eliminate, okay, one power of omega, um, and next I can sort of say, well, it's, if I'm taking the limit as small, then that omega squared is small compared to omega c squared. So what this becomes is approximately uh, the limit as omega goes to zero of one over omega of the sum over species of omega pj squared, and then there's going to be uh, the cyclotron frequency downstairs and an overall minus sign. And so this will be minus the limit as omega goes to zero of one over omega, which is kind of not so good. Looks like it's divergent. But let's write out what these omega pj squared is. The, the plasma frequency squared will be n naught j qj squared over mj epsilon naught. And then the one over cyclotron frequency will be qj over b naught b naught over mj. And now what we see is that the masses cancel. One power of the Q van cancels. And so this becomes minus the limit as omega goes to zero of one over omega, all right. Uh, but there's also an epsilon naught B naught. And, but the critical part is that there's then a sum over J of N naught J QJ. And what is that? Well, that's N naught electrons minus, or ions minus N naught electrons, and they're equal. And so by quasi neutrality, this is zero. So we get a zero before I take the limit omega goes to zero. Okay, so what happens, it's a little tricky, but the off diagonal terms here actually vanish when you sum over the two species. A little tricky to keep track of that. So when I take the frequency omega goes to zero then, these off diagonal terms don't contribute, and you get only the diagonals. The omega squareds cancel, and you get omega p squared just over omega c squared. So what we get then is minus, or sorry, actually it's a minus sign overall. Uh, and so we get minus the sum over j of omega p j squared, or plus, sorry, finally, uh, divided by omega c j squared times the identity tensor as well. And so we can uh, just write this out then as epsilon naught times the identity tensor, which is just 1001, uh, times 1 plus the sum over species of omega pj squared over omega cj squared. And again, here, the, maybe I should say this is I perp effectively. It's just equal to 1001. Is this what I expected for a low frequency limit? Well, previously we got 1 plus c squared over v alpha n squared. Now I got something that looks a little different, at least on the surface. Is it the same? Well, it turns out the answer is yes. Namely, suppose we calculate omega p squared, omega p j squared over omega c j squared. Uh, and in particular, what we want to calculate is 1 plus the sum over species. Okay? And so that's 1. That was what we had up here. So that's 1 plus omega p um, 
I squared over omega C I squared plus omega P E squared over omega C E squared. And um, well, let's kind of work this out. Omega P I squared, now we've got to write it back uh, is N naught J Q I squared over M sub I epsilon naught. That's the ion plasma frequency squared. 1 over the cyclotron frequency is QI squared B naught squared MI squared. That took care of both of the ion terms, or frequencies. Do the same thing for the electrons. That's N naught I, uh, N naught E times QE squared divided by M sub E epsilon naught and then QE squared B naught squared over M sub E squared. And now, of course, we can do a few cancellations. The QI squared is canceled, the QE squared is canceled, and one power of the mass cancels. And so we can write this as 1 plus, and now it's 1 over epsilon naught B naught squared. And then there's an N naught I M I plus N naught E M E. But that's just the mass density, total mass density, rho mass. Okay. And what's one over epsilon naught B squared? Well, let us remember that mu naught epsilon naught is 1 over c squared. So it's convenient to add a mu naught upstairs and a mu naught downstairs. And then this becomes 1 plus mu naught rho mass divided by b squared. And then the 1 over mu naught epsilon naught gives us just c squared. And previously, we had defined that the Alfane speed was B divided by square root of mu naught rho mass. So we can see that this is 1 over 1 plus C squared over V Alfane squared. And that indeed uh, is what we were expecting for perpendicular to B, that we would get epsilon naught 1 plus C squared over V alphane squared. So we've shown that all this stuff in here just gives us indeed um, 1 plus C squared over V alphane squared. So this tells us the perpendicular dielectric constant is also what we sort of expected uh, in that particular case. Okay, so two, so the moral to this story is then that the two particular cases that we had. Um, of interest, parts of the dielectric constant, the parallel part and the perpendicular part, turned out like we thought they would. Um, now, the next question then is, what does this overall dispersion relation, where it's now a tensor or three by three matrix dotted into an electric field, uh, look like? And so let's uh, talk a bit about that. So let's call this the um, overall uh, dispersion relation. And maybe I should reiterate this is for a so-called cold magnetized plasma uniform magnetic field, etc. Okay. And let's just reiterate what it looks like. It's a k squared identity tensor minus omega squared over c squared times the dielectric tensor, epsilon omega, uh, minus then k vector, k vector dot e tilde is equal to zero. What's this really look like? Well, if we just uh, spell it out, let's put it that way, in full 3 by 3 matrix form. First one's going to give us k squared 0, 0, 0, k squared 0, 0, 0, k squared. That's k squared times an identity tensor. 
Next term is going to give us omega squared over c squared. And this will be times epsilon xx hat, epsilon xy hat, epsilon xz hat, epsilon yx, epsilon yy, just writing out all the tensor elements, epsilon, epsilon yz, epsilon zx, epsilon zy, epsilon zz. So that took care of all that. Uh, what's the last part, k, k vector, k vector, look like? Well, uh, it's got a minus sign in front of it. That's going to be sort of, you know, kx squared for the 1, 1 element, and then kx, ky, uh, and then kx, kz, and then on the next line, ky, kx, ky squared, ky, uh, kz, and then kz, ky, sorry, kz, kx, kz, ky, and kz squared. And then um, that's the whole business I have here, okay? And then that gets dotted into EX tilde, EY tilde, EZ tilde. And that's all equal to zero, which I should do vectorially. So the moral to that story is that uh, this in vector form, reasonably simple vector and tensor form, looking dispersion relation, overall dispersion relation, uh, when you expand it out into its full three by three components, looks a bit complicated. Okay. Um, now we shouldn't let that intimidate us, but in any case, what we're going to do next time is not do the general case, because as you can imagine, the general case is a little bit complicated. But we'll take some specific cases. We'll consider waves perpendicular to B, parallel to B, waves extraordinary modes, ordinary modes where E is parallel to B or not, or things like that. And we'll talk about electrostatic plasma oscillations, lower, upper, and hybrid drift, uh, frequencies, uh, various type, Whistler waves, various types of waves. So we'll uh, put all this together into some specific cases uh, next time then.